Now you might come up to a part and make a mistake and that's that's fine. All you do is press Control Z or use the undo control up in the top left. And it quite often happens because you get a bit out of out of track with what you're selecting because it does get a bit confusing. It, it's a bit of a blur sometimes when you're that close to a drawing. But uh, it's it's easy to go back. Just don't go too far because you might have to undo a fair bit of work. What we're doing is working towards the beginning again. We want to click on the first point we made and that's what tells the software that we've finished the cutout and it, then we can do some extra work as you'll see to make this into a 3D object. crossing the last section now and I've gone too far there so just undo that or even drag it back you can drag points easily and square that point off come down and finish it off and when I click again I have to first of all move the very first point which is highlighted in green to a better position and then when I click on it, it will connect the last point to the first point. And now we have a complete cutout. Now what I'm going to do is move down to the bottom left. And give it some depth by... This is the XZ plane. I'm just going to click there and there. And that gives our object some depth in the 3D space. And it's... A matter of just closing this off now, clicking yes, I want to save, and it will update the changes and give us an object on the scene. So this is what we end up with. It's an amazing looking section for a bogey. Now some people will say this is not the best way to build uh, sections like this and I tend to agree but I'm mainly showing you this because it's it, uh, it shows you a technique you can use for smaller things and it's, it's no harm in knowing how to do it. What I would advise you do though is make a section that is as big as this bounding box, just a rectangular section and use a texture and instead of cutting out sections like I've done here just make those sections transparent and that will work better in the game because the, the engine for Microsoft Train Simulator is fairly outdated by today's standards. It's, it's, it's a good program by all standards, but it's not optimized for today's graphics cards. And you'll find your models will work a lot better if you minimize the polygon count. And this particular method actually has a lot of polygons for what it is. So just be careful in that respect. You can see that the uh, bogey is pointing the wrong orientation. So we just have to go to the left panel and select the shift operation tool. And we'll shift selection tool. So just right click on that and make sure that it's set up to rotate 90 degrees on the Z axis. On, uh, on the Y axis, sorry, and it is. So now we can click OK and select our bogey frame and click back on that uh, rotate uh, shift selection and it will perform the operation. We'll just check that everything worked all right by going to wireframe mode. Select it again and you can see that it, yes, the um, axis is still facing the right way. Our bogey has turned 90 degrees on the Y axis and everything's okay. Now what we're gonna do to save time is just make a copy of that so select it press ctrl C click somewhere else and press ctrl V and our copy will appear and we can now position these two into a correct orientation and then we can copy those two again and keep that as a bogey frame to resize the width of these two bogeys and then I'm going to resize them into their final 
size because if you've noticed they're, they're much larger now the one of the benefits of having the bounding box is that you can resize things and keep them in scale so we have to just uh, first adjust the width and I'm going to make them um, eight centimeters wide that's just a guess because I have no reference to the, the real width of the uh, bogey frame but we'll just do that it'll, it'll look fine and this is the X part of the bogey and now we'll just uh, change it to point oh eight and the same for the other one And they're both resized width wise. We need to refer now to the plans and the measurements that I've taken to get the X, uh, the Y, and Z measurements correct. Measurements for the bogies we've got a height, a height of 0.987 metres and a width of 5.521 metres. We're back to our standard uh, form of scaling right click scale to size and this time for the y we have the right measurements and we can add in 0 0.97 sorry for the z which will be the length 5.521 And immediately the bogey frame springs to the right size. Notice how the width looks a lot thicker now when it's in proportion to its new accurate sizing. We can even, we might even have to adjust that again. We'll see how we go. And we'll just put those same scaling measurements into the other bogey. To measurement of 0.987 for the height and 5.521 for the length. And of course I could have just done all this with one bogey frame and then then copied it but you learn these things. I made some calculations and I've worked out that based on the height of this bogey frame and the height at the bottom of it is off the ground, the position of y axis needs to be 